Okay, hello, welcome back. Here we are for week two of the Flex course. So a lot of what we're going to do this week uh, is very similar to what we did in the first week. Um, the concepts that I spoke about in terms of how you move your wrists, your grip on the stick, you know, where you place your fingers and thumb, relaxation, how you manipulate the pedals and things, those are all the same concepts here. We want to we get those habits ingrained in really, really well so that that becomes your natural state of being when you're playing the drums. So to overview this week, week two, the essential rudiment is the double stroke roll. So what you had here in week one, right, left, right, left, the single stroke. Now we have right, right, left, left. Double stroke means you're playing two strokes per hand after each other rather than just one after each other. Two, right, right, left, left. So we're going to approach it the same way we did with the first lesson with the single strokes. Eighth notes and sixteenth notes on the snare. Add the foot. And then we're going to combine with single strokes. We're going to move them around a little bit. And then we'll get into the groove after we've worked on this opening bit with the double stroke rudiment. Okay, so let's get that going. I'm just going to share the screen so you can see the notation. And as we go through this, you're going to get more and more and more familiar with how this looks. And you'll start to just recognize things like that. You'll be like, oh, okay, we've got some eighth notes, sixteenth notes whatever, bass drums here, this, there. So you'll, you'll see how that starts to click in, in, into your brain. and You'll start to get that recognition will come quicker and quicker. So starting with double strokes, let's play this first line. Eighth notes on the snare, count, same as before. One and two and three and four and. Now we have right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. So with executing double strokes, again, it's the same thing we spoke about with the single strokes. You don't want to take for granted, uh, oh, I'm, I'm playing a double stroke, and just go over to your snare and go like this. But relax your arms, relax your wrists, make sure you're holding the sticks in the proper position. Both feet on the pedals when you're sitting there ready to play. Straight back. Relaxed arms here, nice and loose. And with these double strokes, you want to, again, feel the stick bouncing off the surface of the drum. We don't want to press the stick onto the drum. We want to let it bounce back nicely, manipulate with our fingers and our wrist here to get the bounce going on these sticks. Because with double strokes, the only way you can play them as you start to play them faster is if the stick is bouncing for you. If you're trying to like squeeze out every single stroke, your your arm will just explode. It'll you'll just do su too, way too much damage. <clears throat> so I'll start slowly, and I'll show you how to play these really slow. You want to control each stroke at a slow tempo, so you can train your fingers and wrists and thumb to 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 control those strokes. So. So I'm doing these strokes pretty pretty strong here, but from a from a low stick height. I'm not I'm not up here, low stick height, and I'm just giving a nice little whip here. I'm gonna stop sharing so we can get a bit more of a closer view for you to see this. So check out my right hand over here. So that stick's coming cleanly off the drum. One, and. and I'm doing a little wrist whipping motion with my fingers here clearly on the stick. That way I'm controlling each of those strokes really, really well. Okay. So the second, you can see on your sheet because you've got the printout. So I'm not going to share the screen as much this time. 
second line, we're going to add that bass drum. So the difference here compared to those single strokes is that you want to pay attention to where the bass drum's lining up with your hands. Let's share it just so we can talk about this. Because we're playing right, right, left, left, now you've got right hand with bass drum, left hand with bass drum. Whereas before on the single strokes, your right hand was playing with the bass every time. Now it switches up. Right hand with bass, left hand with bass. Okay, so let's try that. Nice and slow again. So remember, we can start the bass drum first. One, two, three, four. Adding double strokes. Two, three, four, and one. you've got that that nice sound of the bass underneath making sure that your hands are nice and tight locked in your whole body is locked in as you're playing that pattern okay so when we get into double strokes as 16th notes we're on to the to the 16th notes now same thing applies but now these strokes are twice as fast because they're they're 16th notes okay so instead of one and two We've got one. So when you were playing the eighth notes, your quarter note count, one and two and, would alternate hands. One, two, right, left. Now because it's twice as fast, that quarter note count is always going to come on your right hand. One, two. So let's play that. I'll just play that line a few times for you. 16th notes just on the snare drum. There you go. And again, at that speed, I'm still controlling them. I'm not letting the bounce happen freely yet. I'm still controlling with my fingers and wrist. So we still have complete control there. Once they get really fast, you need the bounce like this. Those are faster double strokes, and for that, those sticks need to be bouncing. So what we're going to do here, this isn't actually written on the overview, but I'm just thinking here in the moment. Let's practice like we did going 8th notes to 16th notes, like we did with the singles, okay? So, we'll put the bass drum in. So basically what we're doing is we're playing this. Boom, 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 and then this. So you're going to go from this bar here, 8th note double strokes with bass drum, into this line here, 16th note double strokes with bass drum. I'll demonstrate that. And this is tricky a little bit because the bass drum will play with your right hand here on the 8th notes, your left hand here on the 8th notes. But when you go to the 16th notes, the bass drum will always be with your right hand. Right, 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 right. Okay, so that's something to look out for. Here we go. Start with the bass. One. Eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one and two and one and two and three and four and one and And that is your 16th note and 8th note double stroke with the bass drum going back and forth, one measure of each. So the next level to take this up to, oh, there it is. I did write it down here on the sheet. 
Wouldn't you know it? Eighth and sixteenth notes together. So there it is. That's what we just did. So you don't have to look at this one and this one. You can just do this line here. What do you know? I'm smarter than I thought I was. Let's do this one now, combining singles and doubles. So we're taking the single strokes that we did last week, or however long ago that is that you were working on that, that uh, particular exercise, and we're going to put in the double strokes. So we have one line here, singles, eighth note to sixteenth note, doubles, eighth note to sixteenth note. Let's do that one. <clears throat> I always like to set up the bass drum first. One, two, three, four singles. One, and two. What I did there, I just went back and forth. This line, and then this line, and then back to this line, and back to this line. Singles, so eighth note singles, sixteenth note singles, eighth note doubles, sixteenth note doubles, eighth note singles, sixteenth note singles, eighth note doubles, sixteenth note doubles. Back and forth, so you get real comfortable changing from the singles to the doubles, and then changing back from the doubles to the singles. The more you do that, you're building control over these sticks. If I demonstrate that fast, you'll see what I mean. So, one, two, three, four. Singles. helps to build up that control. Last challenge here. Let's add that hi-hat foot again. Just like we did before, we're going to do this just with the doubles, but remember, with all these exercises, just because this is what it says on the sheet doesn't mean that that's the only way you should practice it. Once you've practiced this line here with the double strokes, uh, eighth notes to sixteenth notes with the hi-hat foot, you can go back and do that here too. With the single strokes to double strokes, you can add the hi-hat foot in all of these. You know, This is just an example of how to do it. Once you've practiced that, you can apply that to any of the hand pattern things that we're doing. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. All these elements are kind of fluid. You know, you can say, oh, let's, let's try putting that hi-hat foot in there. Let's see what that does to it. So let's work this out. We're, we've got the walking foot rhythm back again. One, and, two, and. So, again, starting with the foot. We're only doing doubles here for this particular line. So, one, and, two, and, three, and. We're adding doubles. So what you see here when you analyze it and what you feel when you practice it, right hand with bass, right hand with hi-hat foot, left hand with bass, left hand with hi-hat foot. So each stroke here has a different foot going with it, one after the other. When you go to the double speed 16th notes, you've got a bass and right hand together and a left hand with hi-hat foot together every time. Right, left, right, left. Okay, so let's take one quick look at moving double strokes around the drum set. Now, <clears throat> we kind of, I forgot to kind of record this in the first week with the single strokes, but we did work on the fill at the end of week one, the single stroke fill with the groove. So it's a similar concept. When we play double strokes on the snare, you're just sitting right here. You're going... <laughs> And 
that's great, and it's important to play and practice that. Let's say that there's 16th notes. With the bass drum. When we start to move these around the drums, we have to suddenly now pay attention to how do we move efficiently around the drums? How, you know, we, we don't want to be doing something like this where you go... You know, because you're kind of... Every time you're going, oh, yeah, i got to move now over here. Okay, I've played four. Now I've got to move over here. We want this to be smooth. We want this to, to flow relaxed and sound consistent and smooth as we move around the drums. So the way we achieve that best is by using those wrist kind of motion. What we talked about in the first lesson. How we bring an accent out and we move that way. So let me first do it with single strokes just so we can recap a little bit of what we did last time. Single strokes, if we're going to play four sixteenth notes on each drum, we would go like this. One and a two. I change after four, so I change on beat two. Four sixteenth notes per quarter note. So we're going one, two, three, four. So one and a. As I hit that and stroke, one and I start raising my arm already. And it's coming over here, getting ready to hit this guy. So I don't break up the flow. I don't go like this. One and a. Two and a. I go like this. smooth that way. So a good way to practice that is just start between two drums. Just play four single strokes on each. Then you can practice moving from this guy to this guy. Or if you have a tom in the middle, a third tom, you can do it that way. For my case, I, I, I only have two, so I'll do it like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And when you find that you're playing this floor tom, it helps to twist your, 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 your torso a little bit. Don't, don't feel like you have to do this and reach over and still be pointed this way. Move your whole torso over. And then you come back. So that makes it real nice and smooth and efficient as you do it that way. So let's put the bass drum in and move around the drums that way. This We're doing this with single strokes just so that we can recap from last the, the, the first week. Okay, so... Playing the bass drum on the first hit of each four, just like we did. But I'm moving those strokes around. So the same thing applies with the double strokes, but because you're playing right, right, left, left, it feels a little bit different. So right, right, left, left. As I play those first two right strokes, right, right, I get that hand up here. As soon as I've played the first two, and then I play the left two strokes while this hand is kind of starting to cheat over here. Right, right, left, left, right, right. And there it is, nice and smooth. I'm not going like this. It's... So while your left hand is playing those last two doubles, you've got that little bit of a second or so that it takes 
to just prepare that hand, that right hand, to move over to the next one. So let's add in the bass drum and play that around. One and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. and smooth. Let's put single strokes around the kit, then double strokes around the kit. Over the bass drum, keeping it consistent. Try to generate that nice relaxed motion with that right hand. If you're a right-handed drummer, you, the, your right hand will be known as the lead hand. When you move when you move from one drum to the next, that's your lead hand. That's the hand that's leading the way. If you're left-handed, your kit will be set up the other way around, and your left hand will be the lead hand. So let's do single strokes to double strokes around the drum set. One E and a two E and a three E and a singles. That's it. So that gets you moving around those drums. Practice that just like I did, nice and slow, so you can focus on the motions of your wrists and get nice, clean, and clear, relaxed strokes. That's going to help your sound sound better. It's going to help your body be more relaxed and efficient as you're playing. So let's jump into the essential groove element next. Okay, so this week's essential groove is the quarter note rock groove. Now this one is deceiving because it seems like it's really easy. It's like, well, look at that. Quarter note groove on the hi-hat. One, two, three, four. Simple. Last week we did the eighth note groove where we had that extra eighth note hi-hat in here. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. This time we just have the quarter notes. One, two, three, four. You'll notice there's no connecting bar, there's nothing. There's just the black dot note head with the single stem. That's the quarter note. So let's play this first groove here. The thing about drumming that's kind of interesting and, and, and deceiving is that it's, it's usually more difficult to play slow and it's more difficult to play when there's more open empty space and that's what we have with this quarter note beat we have a lot of empty space one two three four you've got that big gap in between where normally you'd have that hi-hat to fill that out so if we play the eighth note groove you could go this hand just goes and that kind of fills out that space and gives you something to to lock on to when you're playing. When we're playing a quarter note beat, you don't have that as much. It sounds like this. So you have to be a little bit more secure with your internal timekeeping pulse so that you don't rush or kind of wobble within that empty space, you know? So it's more challenging than it seems at first to play a, a good solid quarter note beat like that. So that's the quarter note beat with hi-hat, simple bass and hi-hat, snare and hi-hat, repeat it over and over again. But one good thing to not take for granted too, when you're practicing this, don't just sit down and go, okay, I know that it's bass, hi-hat, and snare with hi-hat. And then sit down and just do this. That's, that's too fast. That's more of an almost an eighth note groove. Because you've got this constant hi-hat. Play the quarter note beat slower so you can strengthen that timekeeping. One. And it's important that you count all four quarter notes. 
because this is such a repetitive pattern, just boop, bop, boop, bop, that it's very easy to just lose track of where you are within the measure. And as we develop into more complex kind of concepts practicing, you're going to need to know where you are in the measure. Where is beat one? If we throw a fill in here of some type, you've got to know where the beginning of the measure is. And if all you're doing is just going and you've turned off your brain and you're not counting, you might go to start a fill and start it right in the middle of the measure or something like that. So use this as an opportunity to count those quarter notes consistently. Get that locked in so you feel it and you know always where you are within the measure. One. So that's a good way to use that slow quarter note beat. Just train yourself to count. Moving on now with the ride cymbal, same idea, quarter note groove but with the ride. so on. Do like you did with the other eighth note groove. Move back and forth between bass, uh, between hi-hat and ride cymbal with that quarter note groove. Okay, so quarter note bass drum with, a uh, quarter, or rather quarter note groove, sorry, with bass drum variations. Same idea that we did in the first week. So we're going to change up and add some different bass drum patterns. What gets tricky about this now is that your quarter note hi-hat, here it is, one, two, three, four, that has to stay as a quarter note. And as we add bass drums, like this guy, that's right, it's an eighth note, see? One and. Well, that eighth note is coming in between these two quarter note hi-hats, one and two, one and two. What happens with your body when you're first learning how to play the drums is that your right hand always wants to play together with your right foot on the bass drum. It's a natural instinctive thing that your body just does. When you, when you do this, those two want to go together. So the first two beats of this of this first groove variation here are two bass drums, one and, right? I'm going to share the screen and show you one more time before I bring it back. So here it is, oops, one and two, boom, boom, bap, right? Boom, boom, bap. This and stroke on the bass drum has to be by itself without your hi-hat hand playing it. Okay, so that's the difficult thing about this. So let's play it and you can hear what I'm saying. So the rest of the beat's the same. Boom, boom, snare, bass, snare, bass, bass, snare, bass, snare. So quarter note hi-hat. So there's that beginning, bass, bass. That second bass I just played is by itself, not with this right hand. So that's the thing to watch out for with, that, with any of these grooves that we're looking at here this week with the quarter note hi-hat. Watch out for those bass drum strokes that are on the and beats. Any bass drum stroke that's on an and, like this one here. Second variation, here we have boom, boom, bap, boom, bap. So we've got it again here. Beat three is a hi-hat. And of beat three is a bass drum that's in the middle once again. Three and four. 
Okay, boom, boom, bop, boom, bop. So again, you can start with just the bass and snare if you want to. One and two and three and four. Put that hi-hat in and concentrate on keeping these and bass drum, these eighth note bass drum strokes by themselves, not with this hi-hat hand. Here we go. So there it is. Now, if you're having trouble with these, if your right hand keeps jumping in and playing together with the bass drum, <coughs> what you can do is just take each little section, just take this little section, boom, boom, and just play that a few times. So what I'm doing is isolating these two eighth notes here. And I'm playing the first one with hi-hat and bass, the second one just with bass. So you take it literally one stroke at a time. Watch this. One and. One and. So that way you get used to having one eighth note with bass and hi-hat together, second eighth note with the bass by itself. One and. One and. And then what you can do is, once you've done that a bunch of times and you feel like you're getting that separation between the bass drum and the hand, you can add in the snare to finish off that first little bit there. Boom, boom, bop. So you turn it into this. One and two. One and two. One and two. And then you've got it. Because once you've played this snare, then you're ready to move on with the rest. Now you could do the same approach for this little section here. One and or th in this case, three and. So you could just isolate those two eighth notes. Three and. Three and. And that gets you comfortable with the motion of right hand followed by right foot without the hi-hat. And then once you've done that a few times, add in the snare with hi-hat. Three and four. And that bass drum, you can hear it falling right in the middle. Three and four. Then take the whole bar. One and two. Three and four. One and two. Three and four. And then you've got it. So the next variation, the same thing applies. We've got another bass drum here in between the two and the three. Bass drum in between the three and the four and a bass drum in between the one and the two. So there's a lot of upbeat eighth note bass drums. That's what those are called. Those are the upbeat, the and. The one, two, three, and four are the downbeats of the quarter note, and the and are the upbeats, the upbeat eighth notes. So let's try this pattern here. One and two. Quarter note hi hat. So the same practice thing applies to each of these little sections. If you're having trouble getting these bass drums to be on their own, break it down into these three beats here. Da, doom, so for this one, you would start here with the snare and hi hat. You would go. I add that hi hat. Two and three. Two and three. Two and three and four. Two and three and four. So you can do it very systematically like that. Just look at each little bit and train that bass drum to be able to play on its own without that right hand jumping on it. Final variation is the two bar variation now. So the second measure isn't the same as the first. So let's take a look at this one. 
Oh, this is a mistake here, by the way. I'm just noticing this. This should be a bass drum right here. Okay? Pay close attention to that. That should be a bass drum, not a snare. That's how I'll play it, okay? Sorry about that. I don't know how that slipped through. This should be a bass drum. One. So just bass and snare. One, two, and three. Four, and one, two, three, and four. One, two, and three. Four, and one, two, three, and four. Quarter note hi hat. One, two, and three. Four, and one, two, three, and four. <clears throat> so what we have in this beat that's kind of interesting and, and actually really good to practice are these two sections here where you've got back-to-back -back bass drums. You've got back-to-back -back bass drums here and back-to-back -back bass drums here. Now if you analyze this and look at how they're placed, these give you a good couple of ways of practicing this concept we're talking about. Here you've got two bass drums that come after a snare. Snare and hi-hat together followed by a bass with nothing and then a bass with a hi-hat. Dat do do. And then here you've got the opposite. You've got a bass with hi-hat followed by an empty bass by itself and then a snare. So this gets you practicing bass drums after the snare and bass drums that lead into the snare. Each with the bass drum in the middle not having a hi-hat with it. So if we isolate this, we start on beat two, and we get two and three, two and three, snare, bass, bass, these ones with a the hi-hat, middle one by itself. Two and three. And then if we isolate this, we get three and four. So those are both really good to get this concept internalized. Let's play this whole groove a few times. Okay, that's it. So moving on to the last little challenge. We've got the hi-hat foot coming back again. So just like we did in the first week, hi-hat foot on the and beats. Those upbeat eighth notes that we call the and. So we would approach it the same way we did last time. Start with bass and snare. Bass, snare, bass, snare. So that's your basic bass drum, hi-hat foot, snare, hi-hat foot, bass drum, hi-hat foot, snare, hi-hat foot. The difference between last week and this week is that now we're only playing those ride cymbals on the one, two, three, and four. Last time we played <coughs> all those eighth notes. This time we're only playing the quarter notes, so let's build it up again. going to stop sharing so you can get a bit of a bigger look at it. One and two and three and four and. Now I'm going to add that co uh, quarter note ride symbol in. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So if you're struggling with that a little bit, Again, you can look at individual elements. So we started with bass, snare, bass, snare. We added the foot, hi-hat, and, and bass, and snare, and. Another thing you can do to get comfortable with it is start with the ride cymbal, play the quarter notes, one, two, three, four, 
and then add your hi-hat foot. One, two, three. That's another e couple of elements that you can get comfortable with. So there's always a few different ways that you can try to build it up. If you're struggling with one way, get just the ride cymbal and the hi-hat foot going like that. And that'll start to train the body. Let's look at the second one. So we've got, and remember, just like before with these, practice each measure over and over again individually. Once you've done that and you're comfortable, you can read through all four of these one after the other, you know, if it, and just play them all. Uh, that'd be great. But to start, practice each one individually. <coughs> so second one, we've got that extra bass drum. Just like we had, these are the same beats, but just with the quarter note high uh, ride cymbal over top. So let's start it off. One and three. One and two. Three. Hi hat front on all the end beats. One and two and three and four. Slow it down. the second one. Okay, moving over to the third variation. This is where we get that bass drum coming in on the end of three, right before the final snare. Okay, so let's let's dig into that. You've got your sheet there, so I'm not sharing it because I know you can see your own sheet. So here we go, number three. <laughs> I confused myself. Let's start that again. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and Final variation is where we have bass drums on the one, the one and, the two and, and the three and. So we've got all those bass drums on the and. One and two and three and four and one And there's ways you can put these together with the variations from the first week. You could practice those all together. You know, you could practice because they're the same beat patterns that we're using, just eighth note or quarter note ride cymbal. So you could switch between that. You could do them with the eighth note ride cymbal and then with the quarter note ride cymbal. What would that sound like? I'm going to demonstrate that for you now. So here's the first simple one. I'll go through the variations. Quarter note ride to eighth note ride. So here we go. Switching the, the ride symbol. The beat pattern stays the same, but we switch the ride symbol between quarters and eighth notes. Third variation. Final 
variation. So there you've got that idea you can use, right? So all these things are so interchangeable. The more you, once you practice each, you know, less exercises from each of these different lessons, you can go back through with your other sheets and say, oh, what would it, what would it be like if I put that pattern together with that one? Or if I threw that fill in with that groove? So all these things can be intermixed and, in, and, and intermingled in your practice routine. That's going to be, that's going to be great because it starts to open up so many deep levels of creativity. So the final exercise here to look at today is playing that fill idea again, but using the quarter note groove instead of the eighth note groove. I'm just going to share this one last time. So here we are. Down at the bottom, you've got your quarter note simple groove and your 16th note fill. So we broke down in depth last time how to transition from the crash back to your hi-hat and snare and to keep that flow going without interrupting it. Now the way we're going to do that this time is slightly different because we don't have the eighth note hi-hats going here. We've got a quarter note beat. So let's play it and I'll demonstrate and then I'll explain. One, four, second bar, two, four, third bar, two, So what did I do there? <clears throat> when I played the fill, first of all, there's no eighth note hi-hat here, right before the fill. Last time, because we were playing an eighth note groove, you had to play that final hi-hat stroke that was here before you started the fill. This time, you play snare and hi-hat together on beat four, and then you jump into the fill. So you've got this extra bit of empty space at the end of the measure. Now you've got to be careful about that because what I've seen young students do in the past is that they will jump into the fill an eighth note too soon. They'll play it starting here where that final hi-hat stroke would be. So what they sometimes do is this. One, two, three, four. And they start that fill on the and of four because they're not used to leaving that quarter note of space here. So the way it should be, I'm going to play from this last measure, is like this. One, two, three, four, one. Right there. One, two, three, four, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Four, e and a. Uh. So after you play your four, E, and a, uh, remember you've got four, E, and a. Uh. Crash. Now the crash is back here. That's beat one of your groove pattern again. So da 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 three e and a four e and a uh, way back here. Crash. Now you don't have to rush yourself back to get that eighth note hi hat because there is no eighth note in there. So crash snare. So we just go straight from crash and bass to snare and hi hat. One. So just like that. Now what you can do with this little sequence here, practice this fill using single strokes, practice this fill using double strokes. Okay, because we've worked on double strokes in this lesson, let's use those here too. I'll demonstrate both. First with single strokes. One. Second time. Third time. back and forth that way practice it with single strokes practice it with double strokes make sure that you're getting in and out of the fill cleanly leave this quarter note space here don't don't start the fill too soon 
snare and hi-hat uh, hi together on four, and then fill starting on beat one, crash and bass on one, and straight to the snare for beat two. Okay, great job. We'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.